I'm Roger Jennings and I'm going to show you how cap printing can be easy. The first thing you need to know is that there are three types of caps. The, ver the first one is a foam front mesh back cap such as this one, also known as a trucker cap. What makes these caps different is they're very stretchable and so we need to have a device such as this that blocks the cap so that we uh, create the same tension in both directions in the print area that way we can print symmetrical images like straight line of type across the front of the cap, a circle or a square. So that's the trucker cap. These uh, were then replaced in the market with a cap that's known as an unstructured or unconstructed cap. So when you look in your supplier's catalog, look for unstructured or unconstructed if you want one of these types of caps. This one, for example, is a fairly high profile cap and it happens to have some material in the back. So this type of unstructured cap is actually referred to as a half moon stay cap. These are really nice because you can fold not only the sweatband out when you print, but this liner and grasp them with thumb and index finger, two hands to load on the machine and screen print. When you're through screen printing, you put the liner back in and you can embroider. So you can have both embroidery and screen printing on the same cap. Here's a, another example of that type of cap. It's got that liner in the back, but this is four color process. And you notice it has the rope. When you uh, have rope on a cap, just leave it where it is and we'll push that down into the slot on the cap device where the sweatband goes. Then you get into six panel caps. And then when you get a six panel, you have to be very careful of the seams. This particular seam is very undesirable. Do not buy this type of cap. And I'll tell you why. You can see the two seams overlap like shingles on the roof of a house. These are really difficult to screen print and terrible for embroidery. So you don't want this type of cap. Here's another six panel where the two seams come together and it's very nice for printing. So, and you can see we printed right over the seam and you do not see the seam in the print. Here's another example. And this particular one, the seam is very nice and flat and we have the uh, letter printed right on the seam. Now, some of these six panel hats have seams that look like they've been washed but they're not ironed. They're not flat like this. And so you have high spots and low spots. The ink might not reach the low spot. You want to avoid those hats or use three-dimensional ink. Talking about three-dimensional ink, here's a six panel and you can see how sharp and clean the image is. That's because we use capillary film, high tension screens, three-dimensional ink. And this is not the most ideal seam, but with 3D ink, not a problem. So those are the unstructured hats. Then there are structured caps, the third category. These hats are fairly stiff in the front. They're typically used for embroidery. We now have a new patented device for screen printing, and we will screen print this hat in a little bit. Here's another one which we've already screen printed, and it's got a stiff front on also. Now, for those who like to be challenged with cap printing, this is corduroy, and you can see we printed the corduroy cap, and, uh, but we use three-dimensional ink. That way we bury the texture of the cap. So those are the three types of caps that you need to be concerned with. Next, what uh, instruments or tools do we need to print caps? First of all, squeegee is going to be a lot smaller, about four inches and I particularly like aluminum handle and a triple durometer blade, 75, 95, 75. And the reason is the corners are real stiff and I need stiff corners because I'm going to be printing right close to the thin edge of that frame. I do not want that corner of the squeegee deflecting. So we use triple durometer squeegees. Next is the screen. And this is a retentional screen. It's the only way to print a cap. And the reason is 
we're going to get real high tension in this mesh by rotating this roller and that roller is pulling the mesh so much so this thin bar is bowing in people who have not printed hats but who print caps will all say tighter screens are better for printing than loose screens well it's particularly true with caps because this thin bar is the weak side of the frame and if we don't have tension right here at the bottom of the image we will deposit more ink here than we do in the center of the design and that's problem so we want to have a uniform deposit of ink so you must use a retentional screen very very tight now you're going to see some companies offer curved screens and curved platens as opposed to a flat tight screen and a flat platen we don't and the reason we don't uh, subscribe to curve is that when you have a curved screen there's no tension and when you have no tension then you have no control over how much ink is released plus the mesh may shift if you're trying to butt register colors like that american flag you saw a minute ago the, the colors may not butt register so the people who use curved screens typically print on contact the problem with printing on contact is the mesh is in the ink so when you pick the screen up you're lifting the ink out of the image now your image doesn't have the amount of ink it needs for opacity and color strength and instead the ink is on the underside of the screen so now you have to wipe the bottom of the screens that's work and slow productivity so the other problem with curved is when you're printing over curve your squeegee angle is changing and we know that the angle of the squeegee determines how much ink goes down on the cap so we want that angle to be constant in order to have a uniform deposit of ink so we do not subscribe to curved screens curved platens we want them to be really tight so that's the screen now you're going to notice i've got capillary film on here capillary film is a is a stencil material on a plastic sheet i roll it on with plain water and the reason i like capillary is that i can overlap this thin edge i can seal this edge if i were to use liquid first of all you need a very small scoop coater but the real problem with liquid is the bottom doesn't seal correctly and so when you start to print you get a breakdown of your emulsion here and then you get this unwanted line of ink near the bill of the cap but with a capillary film overlapping that thin edge I've eliminated that problem you notice also I only use as much as I actually need I don't cover the whole screen that saves money and the other thing about using capillary unlike liquid liquid you'll get in the locking strips of the frame and then the locking strips are difficult to remove it's it's uh, more difficult to deal with than just plain water that gets in the locking strips and on the inside of the screen what I have done the plastic that came off of this capillary I laid it in here and used some scotch brand 305 tape to tape from the edge of the capillary to the plastic and then from the plastic to the edge of the film when I pull this all out there'll be no adhesive on the mesh so capillary is a real advantage when printing caps